in a moment. I want to thank everybody for uh, being here uh, and, uh, and for giving us the privilege of talking about Department of Motor Vehicles. This is always a favorite topic for elected officials, particularly governors. Uh, each governor has been overwhelmingly successful in their efforts to reform the DMV. Uh, there's been no major incidences uh, over the course of the last few decades, and the DMV is considered one of the most popular uh, experiences for the vast majority of Californians and Americans. So it may come as a surprise to some of you that we're here uh, to talk about recommendations for improvement on a system that's so wildly uh, embraced by Californians and others. I'm just checking to see if any of you are paying attention <laughs> or awake. Uh, if there is a theme now on topic uh, of this press conference, it's under promise, over deliver. Uh, I am not naive about the challenges of the Department of Motor Vehicles. I actually wrote a book with a preamble that said the DMV is on the leading cutting edge of 1973. That book came out just a few years ago. Uh, my point being, uh, the systems that uh, underlie, uh, that hold up the Department of Motor Vehicles, the architecture, the technology, uh, is Byzantine. It's technology that predates cobalt. It's technology uh, that, for some in the know, uh, is uh, referred to commonly as assembler. You should look it up. Uh, I may have been generous by saying leading cutting edge of 1973. There have been efforts in the past by multiple administrations to upgrade that technology. Uh, they have come short, as have the overwhelming majority of efforts to improve our technology in this state. It is a major issue in the state of California and should be one of the top issues uh, for taxpayers. It's one that doesn't get the kind of attention it deserves, uh, but our IT procurement has failed over and over and over again, costing the taxpayers quite literally billions and billions of dollars. It's not a gross exaggeration. When you talk about waste and corruption, and I call corruption sort of small c corruption, uh, I think that's where you should focus. So often we get off into shiny objects. Uh, rare do we look at the ridiculousness of change orders and projects that start at $100 million and end up at a billion and a half dollars. I make that point to make this point. Um, we're not going big here because we're not naive to that past. We are students of that past. I could be coming out to you today talking about a multi-billion dollar procurement to overwhelmingly change the system and to, within the next five years, reimagine the Department of Motor Vehicles only to, once again, fall short. Uh, we are looking uh, to modernize, but at the same time do it in a very systemic and sequential way. And we'll talk a lot more about that to the extent you have any questions. Uh, today we're announcing, uh, though, the efforts of a strike uh, team that I put together when I took office. Uh, they, are now, they have now come out with a report that we will be talking about uh, in a moment about the progress they've made to date in the first six months, the administration, and what we're promoting to do over the next six months and over the course of the next few years. Uh, we have a real challenge ahead of us, emphasis real, and that's next year, October 1st, uh, 2020. That's when this real ID program has to be uh, finished. There are, I think, 28.2 million people? Who possibly could. Who possibly, possibly, it's the, the, the broad universe of people that may desire to get a real ID. Uh, that's a huge number of people. In order to accommodate that type uh, of volume, uh, we need to be prepared. As you know, this time last year, August of last year, uh, we had reached a real breaking point, the Department of Motor Vehicles. Uh, we had some challenges with motor voter. We had some IT, surprising challenges. Uh, it led to a lot of frustration, consternation, a lot of bickering back and forth upstairs. It led to need and desire to do an audit, some uh, you know, pushback on an audit, because what was it going to find? Maybe everything we already knew. Uh, but 
there was a sense of urgency, and that urgency led to um, you know, some increase in personnel, increase in the budget. Uh, we are picking up on that. Uh, we, in this new budget, uh, have put in, I think it was $226 million? $240 million? Close to a quarter of a billion dollars? Uh, to support the Department of Motor Vehicles, some 1,900 positions, uh, temporary positions, in order to address these concerns. Uh, we brought in Maribel Badger, who's well known for uh, being a reformer. Uh, Kathleen Webb, same. These folks are, you know, they're McKinsey-esque type minds. They're about process improvement. Uh, they're about getting under the hood of things. They're about solving problems systemically. Uh, and they put together a, a team. They went out and did a number of RFPs, forgive the vernacular, and that's just efforts to bring in other experts to assess the situation. We brought in McKinsey uh, to help us with that process improvement in March. Uh, we went out, hired a firm HOK. There were 10 bidders to look at the future of DMV reimagine the Department of Motor Vehicles? What should a modern motor vehicle, Department of Motor Vehicles look like? Should there be offices or just kiosks? Should it be more like an Apple Store experience? Do you, do you show up in line or does someone come out behind the desk and engage you directly? Um, what's the experiential qualities? Uh, do you do most of the transactions in the field offices or do we completely negate the need to go into field offices by using different technologies and, uh, and dis, um, you know, decoupling, disintermediating uh, the experience. Do we have more partnerships with, the tri with AAA as an example? Do we do more pop-ups and kiosks uh, with businesses? And we, we tested some of that. We did just that with Intel. We did that with, um, with Salesforce and Health, Health Net. Health Net. We, we said, and how that went. Uh, we, we did some new partnerships and pilots. Uh, we tested all these things. We even got a contract for credit cards. If nothing else, I want to see headlines <laughs> on that. You know, may diminish my tenure, but if I can deliver on credit cards at the DMV, I may be worthy of your praise. Uh, by the way, I said we have a contract for that. We haven't done that. So, <laughs> Uh, that will be rolling out. We're not doing it all 172 field offices at once. Again, we're learning our lessons of the past, but you'll see the first credit card being accepted for the Department of Motor Vehicle in Davis, California, coming out in September. September. Pilot. <laughs> Three more cities, Victorville, Roseville, Fresno? Fresno, I believe. Is the, the other three in October. So look forward to that. And then the guy, all the ideas to roll them out in every other office uh, over the next year or so. We just want to get it right. Again, it's a different approach. We're not going big at first. We want to go small and build on successes. Uh, so pop-ups, more kiosks, different partnerships, a process improvement approach, bringing in the future by bringing HOK and others to reimagine a DMV experience that will allow us uh, to accelerate uh, a new strategy and approach. We don't want to just pave over the old cow path, but we need to stabilize things in these 172 field offices. We built on what the Brown administration did on expanding hours. Most folks don't know you can go to DMV at least at 62 locations on Saturdays. The utilization on the weekends is really low because people don't know. So we realized we need a marketing campaign. DME didn't have one. So we're investing in a marketing campaign, not just around extending hours, uh, but also around the Real ID program and preparing for it, trying to get more people in sooner or at least getting people to prepare to come into our field offices by getting all their information, uh, which means a new website. We are about to roll out a new website that's not just about pictures and colors. It's a process improvement website. We did this hackathon. It's all the things I love. 
forgive me for being long-winded. I know you're looking for a sound bite, a quick clip, and then you want to ask me about Trump tax returns. Um, <laughs> but but I, we went out with Code for America, something else I've been talking about for years on the campaign trail, and they did a little hackathon, tried to, ha tried to reimagine what a website would look like. And so we're going to have a new website that's got a sort of micro sites that will have what you really need, meaning Real ID is going to be right there on the home page saying, here's what you need for the Real ID, here's the information. So it's a different approach. So that's also part of this. So marketing, new website, credit cards, building our IT capacity in a sequential and thoughtful way, uh, making sure uh, we're not overstating our progress and success, but also <clears throat> making the point we made progress and success. And let me just end with that. Last August, you would have been spending 58 minutes more waiting for a transaction than you would today. That's real progress. We had 16% of customers last August spending over two hours. Can't make that up for a transaction. Today, it's 0 .005. I'll repeat, 0 .005. It's 16% just last August. That's some progress. That said, just an hour ago, <laughs> the entire computer system was down. I love it. On the day of the press conference, you'll probably need to write that down. <laughs> it's just too perfect. <laughs> but it's back up. I mean, that's the nature of this. It didn't go off forever. I mean, but it's the nature. And, and why? Again, it's this old technology system that has you know, barely put together. I think there's some guy in Hawaii. Yes. They were quite literally, right? Yeah. He retired, but he, you know, we keep flying back, <laughs> pick him up against his own interest and say, you know, I got to help us with this old IBM system. Um, it's, it's that interesting. So again, I, forgive me, I, I hope I've made my point. Uh, got work to do. The MV is the retail face of government. There's a reason people don't love government. People, people are frustrated. There's a belief system, at least with 40% of Americans, that use the DMV as a reason they're a member of a certain party. Because they say government can't do its job. I get that. And so we need to prove that we can use your tax dollars wisely. We need to prove that government can work. And I think one of the most important places to start is the DMV. And so We've spent six months of real work on this. This is called governing, not campaigning. We're consumed in this country by campaigns, who's up, who's down, and politics. This is governing. And it's tough, and it's a grind, and it's not easy, and this is going to take a few years. Next year will be tough. Next June, July, August, September, you'll all be rushing to me, down the halls, everywhere I go, trying to find me for a question on what's happening with the surge in volume at the Department of Motor Vehicles. Remember this moment, please, so you can contextualize those questions. We know that's coming, and we're doing everything we can to mitigate that and reduce the volume, increase the transactions online, decrease the in-person engagement. That's part of this broader narrative. But the reason uh, that we have done all of this and we framed this is because of Maribel and her team. She's about to go to the, well, she's about to relax the Public Utilities Commission and now take on the issue of PG&E's bankruptcy and other things. It's a cakewalk <laughs> compared to this. Uh, but this is her, her, her moment, and I know I've stolen a lot of them, uh, but she's uh, going to talk now about this report, and then she's going to introduce our new team, because we, we're actually introducing a new team today. We found a new director of the DMV, someone who wanted to do it. <laughs> we'll talk to Steve about what he was thinking, uh, but also uh, introduce uh, why we think he is a great choice and how enthusiastic we were to be able to find him uh, and, uh, and how serious uh, he is about this task. So with that, um, my, you know, you know go-to person on every challenge that is governing, uh, Maribel Badger, uh, who will talk about 
uh, what she has done, talk about some of the recommendations in this report, uh, and then introduce uh, some of the folks behind me. Uh, thank you, Maribel, for everything you've done. Thank you. Well, um, the governor clearly knows the report probably better than I, given his remarks. <laughs> he uh, ran through many of the things uh, that we, the strike team, have done. First and foremost, I really want to thank the team. Um, the team was literally the staff at government.